Good morning to all. Today we are assembled here for the first consecutive day of orientation program, Bad 2020. Under normal circumstances, we conduct this orientation program for hardly the duration of two to three hours. And it has been packed with us. But now, for the first time, we have extended it for four days. The reason is just because of this pandemic. And to give you a feel of this environment, also to connect with you people, bridge the gap between you and all officials head of the sections, head of the departments, which are relevant to you people. Now today, as per program, all heads of the departments of different engineering sections will give live presentation, apprise you about the faculty, specialization, labs, equipments, academic curriculum, and other relevances of your branch, and much more. Now I welcome all heads of departments. First, I will start at the civil engineering, Professor Manzur Anger, head civil engineering department. Please, sir, go ahead. Good morning, everybody. Uh, myself, uh, Professor Manzur Anger Anger. And civil engineering department. Now, civil engineering department is uh, the largest department of energy Srinagar, and in fact, one of the oldest, uh, which has started along with the inception of this institute in uh, 1916. <clears throat> now, civil engineering department offers a UG program uh, leading to the award of BTEC in civil engineering, and uh, in addition, it also offers uh, four PG programs in geotechnical engineering, structural engineering, transportation engineering and planning, and water resources engineering. Now, uh, present student strength of uh, civil engineering department is BTEC is uh, 559, MTEC 146, and in PhD also we have 109 students. So, faculty strength of civil engineering department is we have 21 uh, regular faculty members across various specializations. And among them, uh, there are nine professors and eight associate professors and three assistant professors. One is the training teacher. In addition to that, we have 11 uh, temporary faculty members. There are uh, four major uh, divisions of civil engineering department. Like we have a structural engineering division. Uh, there are uh, Three professors in that uh, I will name them as Professor A. R. Dar, uh, Professor J. A. Bhatt, uh, Professor M. A. Tantri. Then we have three associate professors, Dr. J. M. Bandi, uh, Dr. J. A. Nakash, and uh, Engineer A. A. Masudi. And we have two assistant professors, uh, Dr. F. A. So Dr. Shakir Abbasi. Uh, then we have another uh, uh, major division of the uh, department that is called as Water Resources Engineering Division. Uh, there are four professors in that, uh, Professor M. A. Loon, myself, Professor M. A. Anger, uh, Professor A. Q. Dar, and Professor Shagusta Rasulsha. We have two uh, associate professors in water resources uh, engineering division, uh, Engineer Dan Shana and Engineer Rupina Mead. Then we have geotechnical and uh, geology division. In this, uh, we have one professor, Professor B. A. Mead. We have two associate professors, in fact, three associate professors. Professor F. A. Mead, uh, Dr. M. Shah, and Dr. S. K. Bukhari. 
and we have one trainee teacher in that, engineer Falak Zahur, who is also pursuing a PhD program. Then uh, transportation engineering division, uh, we have one professor, Professor Ernest Meal, and one assistant professor, Dr. Abdullah Ahmad. Uh, major laboratories in the department are strength of materials lab, concrete lab, structural dynamics lab, fluid mechanics and hydraulics lab, environmental engineering lab, geotechnical laboratory, uh, geotechnical computation lab, advanced geotech lab, geology lab, rock mechanics lab, we have pavement lab, uh, traffic engineering lab, advanced asphalt facilities lab, CAD lab, surveying lab. In addition, we have recently uh, developed uh, one uh, very uh, state-of-the-art facility, uh, earthquake uh, research center, and in which state-of-the-art uh, shaking table uh, it has been uh, installed. <coughs> Uh, there are many softwares, licensed softwares available in the department, uh, uh, about 22 in number. I will name few of them, <coughs> which are of interest to UG students. Uh, Stad Pro, uh, RGIS 10, uh, MyXi Enterprise, Plexus 3D, uh, GeoSuit, Water Gems, uh, Super Gems, and Stad Foundation Advantage. <coughs> now, major equipments. Uh, which are uh, available in the department, uh, high-end equipments, uh, like we have differential GPS, eco sounder, shaking table, smelly mixture machine, uh, asphalt mixture performance tester, uh, Brookfield digital viscometer, dynamic shear radiometer, three axis shaking table, the one I was talking about uh, in the earthquake center, and we have arm field tilting flume, uh, which is having a computer interfacing, so along with the data acquisition system. <coughs> Uh, major research areas, uh, uh, in addition to UG and PG, our department offers also PhD programs across all specializations. So major research areas are construction techniques for low-cost housing with earthquake-resistant features, uh, evaluation of suitable foundation type uh, for hilly areas and low bearing capacity soils, ground improvement techniques, hydrological modeling, uh, climate change impacts on water resources, sediment transport, hydraulic structures, payment material characterization or uh, field to name. In addition to this, uh, the civil engineering department uh, is the uh, one of the, uh, the major departments which offers consultancy services to various uh, government and private organizations. Uh, by way of, uh, which includes uh, design of various types of structures, technical evaluation of DPRs, material testing, etc. So major uh, consultancy areas include structural design of buildings, bridges, etc., concrete mix design, uh, soil testing and uh, geotechnical investigations, pavement design and material testing, design of water supply and sewage uh, schemes, design of uh, water purification and sewage treatment plants, design of hydraulic structures, hydraulic model studies, water quality analysis, uh, geological testing and investigations, landscape of the Italian surveys. <clears throat> now, in the last uh, couple of years, the PhDs awarded in the department are, uh, we have uh, three, four PhDs were awarded, but many are in the pipeline also. Just to name a uh, few of the PhD students who have completed the PhD, Yasir Altaf uh, has completed uh, uh, his topic was uh, integrated climate and hydrological modeling of the high altitude western Himalayan catchment. Then uh, Mir bin Tulhuda, uh, her topic was effect of obstacle type and bad material uh, radiation on local scour phenomena. Then Nasir, Nasir Ahmad uh, Rathar, uh, protective filter design criteria based on particle shape and uh, base radiation of parameters. Then recently uh, Nadim Gulzar Shahmir also completed PhD, PhD has been awarded, adequacy and structural performance uh, uh, of translucent concrete in green buildings. There are five, six uh, who have already submitted uh, whose PhD uh, uh, this review is awaited. So uh, three, four, five, six are uh, expected to complete in the coming three, four months. Major uh, faculty achievements are uh, journal publications are 239 uh, over the last uh, three, four years. 
the conference publication 76, book chapter 12. Uh, our faculty are also acting as uh, editorial members and reviewers of many journals, which include American Society of Civil Engineers, Strategic Journals, Taylor and Francis, and Sage publications. Uh, our department has filed four patents uh, uh, in different fields, <clears throat> so which are under review at, at present. Some of the student achievements, uh, some of our ex BTEC students. Uh, uh, their achievements I will just highlight. Uh, one of the students, Ahmed Bani, he is uh, presently the co-founder and CEO of uh, uh, one concern in uh, San Francisco, California. Uh, Sakib Gulzar is another student, a BTEC uh, pass out from NIT Srinagar, who is uh, doing PhD right now in North Carolina State University, USA. And uh, one more student, Asim Bashir, uh, who is a PhD candidate in the University of Texas A&M, USA. Then Mohammad Adnan Farooq is another student, uh, a pass out BTEC student of this institution, who is pursuing PhD in University of uh, Technology, Sydney, Australia. Now, some of the noteworthy campus placements. Uh, two students have, have been placed uh, uh, in the last couple of years in Yale India Limited with an annual package of 17 lakhs, uh, namely Fahim Rishi and Ritika Munga. Uh, then uh, in Engineers India Limited, uh, two more students were placed on uh, an annual package of 16 lakhs per annum, Basim Ahmed Kataria and Shahda Khandi. Then in Power Grid Corporation of India, uh, three students were placed on an annual package of 14 lakhs per annum, Zail Aswani, uh, Sama Malik, and Rohit Kumar. Uh, our institution and consequently the department also has signed MOUs with various organizations like Ministry of Education, IIT Delhi, DSNL. And recently, uh, the Department of Civil Engineering has signed one more MOU with NHAI, National, National Highway Authority of India Limited. And under that uh, MOU, uh, NHAI is offering uh, 10 internships to our uh, UG as well as PG students, in which they will be paying a stipend to the students also during the period of internship. So that is uh, broadly uh, uh, some. Uh, some more features about the department are uh, uh, professional affiliations for various faculty and research scholars are affiliated uh, various uh, international organizations, international as well as national organizations like uh, ASCE, IEEE, IAHR, uh, International Association of, Association of Hydraulic Research, ISEC, Indian Society of uh, Earthquake Technology, ISTE, Indian Society for Technical Education, Indian Association of Hydrologists, IAH. IWRS, Indian Water Resources Society, uh, Institute of Urban Transport India, WCTRS, uh, World Conference on Transport Research Society. So that was uh, uh, the brief uh, review about the Civil Engineering Department, in which I have almost touched all the aspects uh, of our department. Thank you. Thank you. For advising the students about civil engineering. Now I invite Dr. Abid Bazar, head electrical engineering department. Good morning, friends. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the presentation program for giving me an opportunity to connect to the students. I will directly address the students. On behalf of the Department of Electrical Engineering, I welcome you all as new members of the family. 
at the onset, onset let me introduce me or the department that we are going to be a part of for the next four years. We started off in 1960 as one of the first few departments in IT Shemila. It was earlier called RC Shemila. And over the last 60 years of its existence, the department has established a strong alumni base comprising of academicians, engineers, researchers, and industry persons working in different parts of the world and making us our proud. We continue to produce able engineers every year through our UGMP program at a company. Currently, the department offers one UG program, that is BTEC in Electrical Engineering, and two PG programs, that is MTEC in Electrical and Power Energy Systems, and MTEC in Power Electronics and Electric. We also offer PhD in legal disciplines such as control and automation, power and energy systems, and power electronics and drive systems. There are basically three major specializations in the department. Uh, one is electrical power and energy systems, that's one of the biggest specializations in the department, and most of the many faculty members of our department belong to this uh, power division. Then we have electric power electronic and drive systems and control and automation. You'll be glad to know that we have a strong faculty base of around 14 faculty members who have got their professional degrees from reputed and institutes of the country like IIT, IIC. Uh, they have got diverse research interests, and I'm hopeful by, by the time you physically join the institute, we will have at least four more faculty members who have joined our department. Our faculty continuously engage in research activities spanning areas of global interest such as energy efficiency, high power density, renewable energy generation integration and control, all electronics and electric controls, control system, robotics, or loader reduction, finite element and electrical machine, etc. I'm pleased to share that our faculty continuously publish in journals and conferences of national and international review. At the Department of Electrical Engineering, we are not only committed to impart technical education with updated curriculum, but also keeping you abreast with the latest in the area of electrical engineering. In delivering the high standards of technical training, we are aided by world-class infrastructure in the form of around 10, 10 to 12 highly equipped laboratories that provide a conducive environment for students to learn and grow. To name a few labs in the department, we have got the basic electronic department, our lab, which is actually catering to the to all the students of the institute, all the branch. We have got a core course in electrical engineering, basic electrical engineering that is offered to the first year students. In first semester, we offer it to electrical um, branch, electronics and communication engineering, then computer science and IT. And in the second semester, we offer it to the other four brands, that is chemical engineering, metallurgical and material engineering, um, IT and uh, this uh, mechanical, mechanical engineering and civil engineering. And uh, we have got the theory course as well as the lab course. So in the first year, we will have an interface with you um, uh, with reference to this particular course. And then other labs in the department are microprocessors and digital signal processing lab, electrical machines lab, power systems lab, electric energy systems lab, control and automation lab, then uh, departmental computational uh, computational laboratory, measurement and instrumentation laboratory, virtual and instrumentation laboratory. These are just few of the some of the labs that I have mentioned. Um, at the Department of Electrical Engineering, we are not only committed to impart technical education with updated curriculum, which is of course our primary goal, but we are equally inclined towards inculcating professional ethics in our students. I guess without professional ethics, an engineer has got no value. Furthermore, we also work on your personalities also. We try to inculcate a positive attitude in you. As you know, an engineer should have a positive attitude and should not be afraid of change. In this era, where a new technology is emerging every day, an engineer should be ready to learn, unlearn, and relearn. He or she should be creative and possess an out-of-the-box thinking approach. My advice to the students is not to get bogged down with problems. You don't have to run away from problems. Learn to face them with the right attitude. That's the key to success. And in this endeavor, we as faculty members of the electronic department will find us helpful. We will try to inculcate this attitude in you. I guess one of the main difference between an engineering and a non-engineering student is the attitude. An engineer must really have a positive attitude. And, uh, you know, um, we are actually facing a very extraordinary situation in the form of this pandemic, and it has taught us many new things. We would have liked to hear physically, uh, we would have liked, liked a face-to-face -face interaction with you, but this pandemic has forced us to go online, go to virtual mode, 
interact with you. And I hope and I pray to God that by the by at least the next semester, we would have a face-to-face -face interaction with you and you can actually come to the campus, enjoy the serene climate, environment of the campus, and uh, have a uh, actual physical interaction with your faculty. Finally, I would like to conclude by wishing you all on behalf of the Department of Lectures and that the coming four years of your life is very great learning, knowledge sharing, excitement, and a, and a, and a lot of friendship. We will welcome you on board and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abhishek, for advising students about the right engineering department. Now we have a little bit of a issue. This uh, hand mechanical engine is uh, busy somewhere in the meeting. Now, Mr. Raft is uh, here. We have head intelligent Dr. Mustaq on the Raft. Head intelligent will advise us about the uh, different specialization faculty and programs, academic curriculum in the Department of Engineering. Now I invite head chemical engineer Dr. Mushtaq Ahmed Rafa to advise students about the uh, achievements, milestones, and different academic curriculum in the Department of Chemical Engineering. Good morning, all. Respected faculty, colleagues, other staff members of the National Institute of Technology for facilitating us this presentation. As uh, Dr. Parvez, your coordinator, just told you about the different perspectives of this chemical engineering I'll be presenting. He told about some milestones and all these tales, but uh, at this stage, let me try to get you acquainted with what this chemical engineering is, basically. What you are going to do over here, to introduce my de uh, department. To introduce uh, mostly those things uh, which will be uh, recurring at this stage, maybe that later on they will uh, maybe thinking that those details are so primitive. So I have a presentation with me, we will be loading uh, that PowerPoint presentation and hopefully you will be concentrating upon that, you will be able to see that clearly, I will be presenting some details. So if we start with the overview of the chemical engineering and uh, this slide second. This uh, 
our this engineering, this chemical engineering, all about the changing of the raw materials into the used products. And what we are doing, in fact, is the transforming such an object it should be safe and cost effective. For example, you are knowing about the synthesis of this uh, plastic products, getting up the petroleum in form of different pro products, maybe kerosene, petroleum, diesel, synthetic fibers like polyester, nylon, and many, many things which you usually are thinking once a term chemical engineering is coming before you. So, we concentrate mainly upon the basic principles of the chemical engineering together with the biochemical and physical states of the substances and creating everything from the, if we say, from the phase creation. So, everything, most of the daily use products, if you see or introspect upon those, you will say the chemical engineers are doing mainly uh, that. They are the responsibility. Slide seven. So where from this all came and how much big role you are going to play? See, the population of world by uh, uh, 2025 is uh, projected to be about 8 billion people. So a very huge number, very, very big number. So world will be facing a lot of concerns regarding the products, daily use yes. products and to run the industry. Yes. Uh, uh, have this. Uh, the food requirements. So chemical engineering is going to play a very big role. Maybe it in form of the environmental sustainable, uh, sustainability, the different the critical points we are expecting to be reached by this time. So what are the opportunities for you as chemical engineer? If you again see this slide. The pictures are clearly depicting that. And if I name some sectors, biotechnology, biopharmaceuticals, food, drinks, water, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, bulk chemicals, specialty chemicals, consultancy, consultancy and design of different operations. For example, if you consider simple, simple a petrochemical plant. From the right from the inception of that plant, right from the digging process, see uh, carrying out the feasibility study design and ultimate operating of those plants. So you are the people who would be mostly concerned about them. And in the energy sector, health, safety, environmental services, materials, consumer food, education, and even in law, business, finance, which you cannot even imagine. These are the sectors where you have been playing very much prominent role and many more sectors. So why from this all came? In the later half of the 18th century, chemical engineering began to earn states of a complete independent division of knowledge. In 1772, J. Beckman, a professor of Gottingham University, coined first this term chemical engineering. And he was also instrumental in publishing the ever first book on the chemical engineering. And what this chemical engineering is now? This is a branch that utilizes the principles of chemistry, physics, mathematics, biology, and economics to efficiently design, transport, and transform and synthesize the materials and the processes. You require a strong foundation of these courses. We just I told about the physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics. And when you undergo the curriculum of the chemical engineering, you will see that a lot of the contents are being covered. Comparably, I should tell you that. The basic principles of the mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, which are being taught over here, they are the highest in your this field. And why? Because you do require those things, those should be taken. And what applications, if I try to just uh, concentrate upon some of the aspects of these in the plant design, what are the applications? Process design and transport. Transport is not what usually the transport you are referring to, vehicular movement or people being transported from one place to another procedure. It's different transport, mass transport, heat transport. And you are concerned about, right, you are concerned about the design and uh, complete inception design and practically doing work. The modeling and control engineering, chemical reaction engineering, nuclear engineering, biological engineering, and transport phenomena, which I just told that fundamental transport phenomena. 
मास ट्रांसपोर्ट हीट ट्रांसपोर्ट फ्यूल ट्रांसपोर्ट You are not only limited to those we just I named before you. There are many subfields which nowadays have come and we are going to think about those. Biochemical engineering has been since long associated with your this field. Then nowadays computational fluid dynamics, biotechnological uh, engineering, chemical process technology, and some more related subfields, fuel cell technology. Oil exploration and refining, fuel dynamics, heat terms, many more sectors where we are indirectly concerned. Since due to the pandemic, we have we have not been able to the physically report to the department, and we have not been physically able to interact. So, if I try to take you a bit of a virtual tour of the department, so this is our main block. You can see that we have three blocks over here on the right side. The the main block you are clearly seeing over here is on the left hand side. Uh, the faculty rooms, the faculty chambers, some of the research laboratory or equity uh, chamber, they are housed in this. Then towards end of that, you see another block, two laboratories, heat transfer, uh, 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 reaction engineering and uh, workshop are housed in this. On the right side, you are seeing the photograph, half of that only. This is the UG laboratory first, uh, mechanical operation laboratory. Here, heat transfer laboratory, mass transfer laboratory, and uh, some of the equipment of the energy engineering are housed in. Next, this is front view of the main block I just showed you. This is the entry gate of your block. Next. This is one of the laboratories where students are carrying out the this is basically a research laboratory and uh, UG laboratory, energy engineering laboratory where students are busy in carrying out some of the experiment on this. This is the entrance of the main block, uh, first floor, first floor of the main block. If I try to give you the detailed introduction of the department, the department was started in year 1960. This is the time when the uh, uh, this National Institute of Technology was established as Regional Engineering College in 1960. This was established. So your department comes among the first off-site departments which were established in this. Initially, the intake of the students were 25, uh, and the program uh, that time was for five years, bachelor's degree course. Now, the same program has been, uh, uh, is now a uh, four years program, and this was practically changed in 1981. And also now, in addition to the BTEC, we are running a master's program also in the department. The latest intake uh, of the BTEC program is uh, around about 90, I think more than 90 of, uh, students and 18 at the masters. Also students are pursuing, we have 20 number of registered students who are pursuing the PhD search under the guidance of the faculty members of the department. We have tried that the schemes of the BTEC and the MTEC should be prepared or drafted in such a way so that the most of the needs which we will later on uh, encountering in the field, wherever you are getting employment opportunities, so those things should be incorporated. So fundamentally, if you try to see the courses include the reaction engineering course, thermodynamics, transport, phenomena, mass transfer, process, process control, and many, many more courses, which have a huge requirement, huge need uh, for you to be able to become a complete chemical engineer. Also, in our curriculum are the range of these elective courses. Elective courses, we are trying to focus what are the what's the need of the hour, what are the courses wherein the chemical engineering would be required in the field. And those topics are taken, the syllabus is drafted, uh, the competent body of the institute is giving us nod to float those courses and you people can opt for this. However, for elective courses, it means that it is not, um, uh, although from uh, elective, suppose in a semester you have elective one and elective two, although you have to opt definitely for elective one and also for elective two, but you have the range of the choices available in terms of the elective first, suppose three, four subject, and elective second, three, four choices were there. And again, you have an opportunity, depending upon your aptitude taste, which elective you are going to choose. The freedom is up to you. So now in our course from this uh, fresh seeking, which we are drafting, we are, we have, we are about 10% of the courses we are adding online. The presently we are uh, devising the syllabus and 
trying to get update from the relevant these industries, institutions, so that proper syllabus and contents of those should be uh, uh, put in the syllabus so that it will be able to take those questions. We try our best to uh, rigorously train you people and evaluate also you on the continuous basis so that you should become the world class chemical engineer. And for that, we are proud to have the well equipped laboratories which complement your theoretical studies which have been taught at their bachelor's level or the postgraduate level to you. We are uh, also able to handle the state of art in the laboratories or in the trust area in terms of the research in energy, environment, biotechnology, separation process, and some other processes. <coughs> so if you try to see the vision of the department, be, uh, to be one of the leading chemical engineering departments in the country, engaged with teaching, research, and training of students with high moral value to solve the problems of chemical and allied industry for meeting the aspirations of the society. See, the main things were there in our vision. So we are concentrating basically about teaching, research, training, and we do not try away, uh, shy away from uh, the what moral values are expected from you people while you are doing those things, and by doing those things, try, try to solve the problems. And we concentrate about the chemical and allied industry. And simultaneously, we uh, try to keep in mind the aspirations of the society. Suppose you can chemically do a process, but it is affecting badly even environment. So we cannot recommend that. We will try to find the alternate reasons for the better way of development. That is the societal aspects also we are trying to keep in mind. This thing is included in our vision. So mission of the department is based upon these three guidelines. First, to create and sustain the strong foundations of the chemical engineering education, research, and innovation. Second, to produce well-qualified, innovative chemical engineers with entrepreneurial skills and leadership quality to face and solve the problems of industry and society at large. To make the professional leaders, academicians, engineers with high moral values and ethics. We ex expect you people to be the valued person in the society when you pass out from this institute, pass out from the department. The program specific objectives, the curriculum which you are uh, being taught with <coughs> some uh, three years will be ahead. Apply the principles and practice of chemical engineering disciplines along with the basic sciences and humanity to solve the complex engineering problems concerning the issues of environment, safety, economics, culture, and society. Second, to acquire and apply the knowledge with professional responsibility <coughs> and ethics towards the advancement of academic and research pursuit in chemical and allied disciplines in the society and concept. Design, develop, and modify the chemical processes and analyze these by applying the physiochemical and biological techniques. <clears throat> One of the four tools, since again you are not with you, recently we have taken all of the students are not here. You can see the in the front row our faculty. Uh, also, you can see what the in the front row is our uh, what the director with us, our I star, Dean Research. Faculty members are there. I will be showing separate details. And some of the selected the research scholars are standing here beyond. So faculty details, again, I will be trying to introduce you. Professor Noor Salam Khan, area of the research. I am giving you there. I, am, I hope that people are seeing this fermentation, biosepiration model. Dr. Faisal Koyumi, Associate Professor, Research Area of Membrane, Electrochemical System, Electrodialysis, Bioscience. Dr. Tamir Rasool, Assistant Professor, Research Area of Biomass Conversion Technology, Industrial Pollution Environment. Dr. Malik Parel, Assistant Professor. You can see the laughing face. He is also your coordinator. See, uh, research, uh, right, right. research interests are computational fluid dynamics, heat and mass transfer, fluid flow, nanotechnology. Dr. Shishikant Kumar, Assistant Professor, Research uh, Area Membrane Separation, <coughs> Waste Water Treatment. Dr. Kurela Swami, Assistant Professor, Research Area Industrial Pollution Control, Phase, tra uh, phase Transfer Catalysis, Coal Technology. Next. Dr. B. Krishna Sarihari is also Assistant Professor, Research Area Micro Channels, Liquid slug, uh, slug Flow, Fluid Mechanics. Dr. Fatima Jalit, Assistant Professor, Research Area Computational Fluid uh, uh, Computational Catalysis. 
microkinetic modeling, fluid flow, nanotechnology. And additionally, to cope up with the uh, load which uh, we have to, uh, or having the department, we are also having some of the temporary faculty members. Uh, time to time, they are engaged in the department. So, personal details I uh, have given over here. Uh, my research interests uh, are energy engineering, nanotechnology, wastewater treatment, biomass conversion technology. So here I take this opportunity to share with you, uh, if you need in the future, my contact ID. This is at HOD chemical at nitc.ac.in, mrather at nitc.ac.in. And my contact number is also there, because uh, sometimes uh, you may require this contact. Although, at this stage, since you have to go into the first and second semester, they study in only. So mostly, you are concerned with those faculty members and the departments alike, mathematics, physics. I, if uh, what are the ongoing research, these areas upon which the department is concentrating, the ceramic membrane, nanophotocatalysis, waste water treatment, CFD, computation fluid dynamics, biotechnology, biomass conversion. Different, uh, sorry, the overview of these undergraduate laboratories in the department, fluid mechanics and mechanical operation. I hope you are fundamentally getting what you expect to be learned or uh, uh, you would be having an experience of doing in the laboratory fluid, so you would flow up the most mechanical operation, different equipment which mechanically are carrying the operation. Heat transfer, energy engineering, mass transfer, process dynamics and control lab, biochemical engineering lab, uh, TRE lab, thermodynamics and reaction engineering. TRE stands for that. Then we have also some PG and research laboratories in the department. Sophisticated instruments available in both laboratory and state of art research is being carried out. Biochemical engineering laboratory, energy engineering research laboratory, environmental engineering laboratory, membrane science and technology laboratory, advanced instrumentation laboratory, catalysis laboratory, multi laboratory. I'm confident, given uh, you know, people have would be definitely having an opportunity now coming to the department, you will be uh, exposed to the world-class equipments and the facilities and the experiments which are no less than other the institutes, IIT, NIT, and the world-class I am confident about them. Some of the equipments, is I just try to give an overview, which are available with us, and you can use some Google out that these are, of course, the very sophisticated instruments, the very useful. High-performance liquid chromatography. This technique is used for analysis, of, um, uh, analysis and separation of these and identify the different these components in the liquids uh, in case of the mixed. BET, surface area analyzer, a sophisticated instrument usually used for finding out the surface area of the powders, their size, shape, and volume. Next. CHNS analyzer, this uh, fundamentally is concerned about finding the elemental composition of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur. You mu must have studied at the 12th standard level that how much tedious it is to find out the elemental composition, elemental ions. So this is the sophisticated instrument, very costly also, uh, which is available with you. Next. We have bomb also bomb calorimeter with us. So calorific value of the fuels, you will be able to calculate by means of this. Next. Centrifuge, to separate the solids from the liquids. Do this by centrifuge. We have bioreactor reactor also. This involves the using of the microorganisms uh, in biochemically active substances and derived from the microorganisms. In that atmosphere, you are concerned about getting your useful pro product, suppose fermentation product. Right. Incubator sh shaker. While uh, getting the things, you know, uh, micros, uh, and application, the application, you are simultaneously able to get a shaking. With the incubation. Yes. UV spectrophotometers, these are also available in our department, and I hope that you will be having some knowledge at the 12th standard level that is concerned about the measurement of absorbance at the certain wavelengths. And so, uh, in other uh, higher end of the spectrophotometry, uh, you will be also able to calculate the transmittance or the reflectance of the solutions and the <laughs> opaque solid for those glass beads. Then, uh, porometer is also available with us. This is fundamentally used to measure the porosity. Porosity of the main things, for example, specifically for the membrane, 
engines for us. Potential state this is an electrical instrument that controls the voltage difference between work, working electrode and a peripheral circuit. And it helps to measure the current flow between working and counter electrode. Again, it's very much sophisticated. So you would be always concerned about this thing that what are the employment opportunities for, for us. So traditionally seeing that advertisements in the different these organizations will be floating, you'll be applying and uh, doing your work to get the opportunity. So usually you are focusing upon different public sector undertakings. Under, these are the undertakings working under the government of India. Some of the prominent I will be I have highlighted over here. I won't be going into the full form because I think that most of you are knowing ONGC, IOCL, NPCIL, GAIL, BARC, BIN, HURL. This, this you might not have heard. Hindustan for Work and Ryasan Limited. Ryasan, you understand, refers to the chemist. NALCO, DRDO, Defense Research and Development Organization. Next. There is also vast private sector available to you. This is not uh, state at the state level, at the national level, but also at the global level. And I must tell you over here that the chemical engineering which have passed out from our department, you may have the world registry. World registry. Wherever you go, uh, I, I must say that you have an opportunity to interact with our pass out. And our pass out, they are very much well connected and also extend their helping and wherever you go. So, some of the sectors of such the private sector industry world or the petrochemical industry. You must you must uh, be knowing the petrochemical industry is not only operated for that even in our country at the uh, government uh, control. On the, you must have heard about the uh, Mukesh Ambani the, the, is uh, has a vast source of uh, petroleum this digging and explore that offshore Mumbai. Those have been done by that enterprise uh, uh, under him. Then petroleum refineries again in the private sector are here. Cement factory, food processing and technology, and fertilizer factory, pharmaceutical industry, biotechnology, many more sectors which I have not written over. Next. The inspiration from the prominent chemical engineers at the national and the international level. For your this for your interest, I have put in here. I won't be giving too many details. I hope that you are seeing the details and you can see. Charles and David Coach, two brothers, very much well known and very rich engineers, as chemical engineers, they have told in the industry uh, nowadays, uh, still work, coach industry. Then Mukesh Aman, I think that I do not need to give too many details regarding him, you are yourself knowing. He's a chemical engineer. James Radcliffe. Basically, he has uh, started his uh, career in Exxon Chemical. Then he established INE Boys, his own enterprise. Very powerful person in the world. Miranda Yao. <coughs> uh, her dead folk, oh, I, I think that probably I'm not sure whether she's still alive or not. But uh, if, uh, the, uh, his uh, name is existing in the Women's Hall of Fame. You can Google out for the details. And she has been president of science and technology, uh, has obtained that medal. Then Delia Abron, mm -hmm. CEO of her environmental engineering consulting company, here consultant species. Many, many more. You can Google out the prominent chemical engineer. Then at your country level, you must have heard about Mr. Nitin Noria, Dean of the Harvard University, he's a chemical engineer. Raghunath Anand Mashalka. Usually you must have heard about Mashalka. He has been advisor to the Prime Minister, scientific advisor, and he has been director Gen general of the CSIF. And a very powerful person uh, who has played a role in the decision making of the, uh, at the highest level in the country. Then Govardhan Mehta, uh, very huge credits to him, FNA, FASE, and many, many of these uh, uh, awards. Next. Then you must your Knowing this person, I do not need to give any further details. Z Jinping, President of China. Next. This person also you are knowing. Mukesh Amar. Next. And who else? I am confident that there will be no among you who is not knowing this person. Although he is having an altogether different career after 
pursuing the chemical. He is a cricket commentator and journalist, Parsha Gowi. So current trends in your this chemical engineering is that you are not focusing upon the traditional sectors only the petro, petrochemical, energy and all those daily uses. Nowadays, the focus is being laid down upon nanoparticle, nanotechnology, pollution control, polymer science, biology, solar energy, tissue energy, thermodynamic processing, waste management technology. Many, many sectors nowadays which have come. Next. So towards the end of my presentation, let me have the, some words of the wisdom for you. Next. Please. Read this carefully, and I will also pronounce this for you. You are the architect or architect of your own destiny. You are the master of your yeah. own fate. You are behind the steering wheel of your life. There are no limitations to what you can do, have, or be, except the limitation you place on yourself by your own thing. Please underline this thing. Accept the limitation you place on yourself by your own thing. So your own thinking plays a very huge role. Think big, achieve big. And another one for you. A river cuts through a rock, not because of its power, but because of its persistence. So for those of you who might be afraid of the so-called competition which you are bringing in with your colleagues, with other students, by thinking. Don't think about that. Your perseverance uh, and the persistence is a huge factor. It plays a role in your success. Next. Towards end, I will be just giving because you at the most of time are inquiring about this thing <laughs> uh, from a salary perspective. This is an authenticated data, data from two sources, the Institution of Chemical, uh, Institution of Chemical Engineers, CHME, Salary Survey of 2014. Nowadays, of course, statistics might have changed. And also, they published in the Times newspaper on 22 September 2014. See yourself. Mm -hmm. Different professions are categorized over there and salary, rough salary, of course, this would be a rough salary is given at the international level and see yourself by you figure after dentistry you are over there and this is the per year salary average and then after you come the medicine, general, some general engineering discipline, economics, mechanical engineering, aeronautical and manufacturing, engineering, veterinary sciences, electronic science, electronic engineering, civil engineering. So see it, feel proud of it. So at this stage, I think now, I thank you all for being with you. I'm not basically saying to people, but I am, I hope that you are carefully listening, carefully seeing it. And we hope this pandemic is going to end soon and you people will be joining you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Mustaf, for this detailed overview of the department and opportunities for the students. Thank you very much. Now we have with us Professor Nazir Ahmed, head of mechanical, sorry, Sheikh Nazir Ahmed, head of mechanical engineering, one of the biggest department in NIT sales network. He surprises about various activities, <coughs> curriculum in the department. Please do it.
It is a great pleasure for me and opportunity that I am introducing one of the oldest departments and one of the brightest departments of engineering, the mechanical engineering department of MIT Srinagar in India. <coughs> right from the date 1960, when NIT Srinagar was established as a regional engineering college with a joint venture between state government of Jammu and Kashmir and the centre. The department has shown uh, excellence in the field of mechanical engineering in producing the bright mechanical engineering graduates, professionals in the country who have worked within country and abroad. The Mechanical Engineering Department stands for what? That is what I am going to explain here. <coughs> I was seeing some video from Gulf University that originally engineering profession has initiated from the field of civil engineering. The people who were involved in masonry, construction of buildings, construction of bridges, construction of roads, used the field of physics, chemistry and mathematics and then were called engineers. They were the first engineers of the world. Then in the field of defense, when the bullet came into existence and the gun by which we fired came the profession of mechanical engineering and then we added some automation to this defense field that was the electronics, communication and then the power that we needed to provide these defense machineries came to be the electrical engineer. And then the profession went on development and nowadays we have lot many fields of engineering. The sole aim of engineering is to provide comfortable life, a progressful life, an excellent life for human beings. It may be the field of health, it may be the field of uh, living, it may be the field of excellence. In all these fields, we engineers have to provide them the comfortable life. And of course, I uh, missed one very important field that is economy. <clears throat> economy is one of the important aspects of life. 
So, directly going to the Mechanical Engineering Department, MIT Srinagar, the department comprises, comprises of uh, a high caliber faculty who are mostly qualified from IITs within country and from foreign universities. We have the senior most uh, faculty, fortunately, the director of the institute, Professor Rakesh Sagal. He is from mechanical engineering field and is qualified from Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, in the field of tribology. Then we have Professor M.F. Wani. He is a master and PhD from IIT Dahri in the field of tribology. Then we have Professor G. Harman. He is a master and PhD from University of Victoria, Canada in the field of fracture mechanics. Then it is myself. Professor Sheikh Nazir Ahmed, I am Master and PhD from IIT Madras and IIT Kanpur in the field of aerospace engineering, aircraft wind vibration and smart structures. <coughs> then we have Professor M. M. Wani, Maruf Wani, he is in the field of IC engines from IIT Delhi, Master and PhD and Postdoctoral degree from UK, United Kingdom. Then we have Professor Adnan Kayum. He is Master PhD from Rumki and IIT Kanpur in the field of mechanical engineering, heat transfer. Then we have Professor uh, Babar Ahmed. He is Master PhD from IIC Bangalore the field of uh, solid mechanics and smart materials. Then we have uh, professors like uh, Sad Parvez and uh, Professor Shahid Salim, Professor Uriya uh, Bhadim uh, Sahab, Charu Sahab, Mursaleen Sahab. <coughs> they are also well qualified. They have the Master PhD in uh, Tribology of the other fields of industrial engineering, etc. And we have new faculty, five members. Uh, they are uh, respectively in the field of production and then uh, design, thermal engineering, etc. We have high caliber faculty in the Department of Mechanical Engineering and uh, we expect more faculty uh, within some months. Uh, we expect that they will join. <clears throat> so far as the facilities of the department are concerned, we have uh, advanced uh, research laboratories, especially in tribology field. Uh, we have uh, one facility of about one and a half crore rupees uh, profilometer. We have so many uh, uh, microscopic uh, facilities. The Department of uh, Work, many crores of rupees, and we have many other uh, like XRD uh, research facility, testing facility. Uh, we have some uh, fatigue and creep uh, testing facility that is also worth crores of rupees. We have recently got a 5 axis uh, milling machine for uh, about 5 crore rupees research facility. Uh, similar way, we have uh, so many facilities, RP machine, we have about one and a half crore rupees research facility, <coughs> rapid prototyping uh, machine, and many other uh, facilities are there. Uh, it is well equipped department uh, uh, with uh, testing facilities and research uh, oriented facilities. So far as the curriculum is concerned, uh, we have uh, a different, uh, of course, one bachelor program in mechanical engineering, general, which comprises the field of production, industrial engineering, 
थर्मल इंजीनियरिंग हीट ट्रांसफर सॉलिड मैकेनिक्स एंड आई सी इंजीन कंबाइंड वी हैव ए जनरल प्रोग्राम ऑफ बैचलर ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग देन वी हैव सम मास्टर डिसिप्लिन्स मास्टर प्रोग्राम्स वन इज इन सिस्टम डिजाइन another is in uh, tribology another is coming up in thermal engineering and we expect uh, in future some more uh, masters programs we have uh, many uh, research uh, scholars in the department doing phd and many are producing uh, so we have a powerful uh, research program in mechanical engineering especially in tribology <clears throat> we have time to time uh, modified our curriculum so that uh, it is uh, of the state of the art and of the standards of uh, international level like uh, we have been copying uh, the way courses have been taught in the best universities of the world like stanford Princeton, uh, Oxford, and other universities and IITs within country. So our goal and aim mission will be that we produce our graduates of international caliber will be able to com compete internationally and will be able to contribute. in the international uh, agencies uh, of mechanical engineering and other fields our alumni who have passed from uh, rnk srinagar uh, most of them uh, have qualified civil services examinations and one of the example this time is that our advisor to lieutenant governor uh, sharma sahab he is an alumni of mechanical engineering department uh, and has uh, passed uh, civil services examination in my batch when i passed in 1986 mechanical engineering my batch mates most of them have passed civil services examination and uh, finally they left that also joined uh, some jobs in america <coughs> uh, so mechanical engineering has shown lot of potential so far as achieving jobs internationally and nationally is concerned we would have been long back uh, declared uh, as an institute as iit but because of some uh, turmoil in the history of uh, state Uh, we were not able to achieve that uh, however the potential is there we have so many international collaborations we had first uh, international collaboration from mechanical engineering department with italy and it was the government of italy who established in this institute and it is in the the tribology department maintenance and tribology department and uh, recently we have got uh, some uh, other countries as well uh, like tunisia uh, and uh, some other countries within the uh, country we have uh, with many high uh, level agencies we have collaborations like uh, we are sending our uh, students to an nal bangalore for thesis and research purposes we have some collaboration with them national aerospace laboratories and we have some collaboration with ig car uh, laboratory research laboratories in madras we have some uh, collaboration with uh, isro we are sending our students there so all the research facilities in country we are able to exploit for research purposes so far as the bachelor program in the department goes it is uh, a powerful uh, curriculum program it has uh, advanced courses in thermodynamics and heat transfer 
we teach uh, the fundamental thermodynamics and we have some laboratories uh, laboratory courses in thermodynamics then we teach advanced uh, heat transfer in conduction radiation and the convection areas we have research facilities in that uh, and laboratory facilities uh, which uh, are very useful for the students to build their cur curriculum uh, capability then we have uh, the field of structures i am myself in aerospace structures uh, i have been teaching the uh, course on continuum mechanics the course on elasticity and uh, general structures structure one structure two since i have been well trained in aircraft structures uh, so we are able to teach uh, involved structures and composite structures and smart structures then in the field of structure mechanics we have professor j rahman who will be uh, who is a capable person in fatigue street and structure mechanics and we have courses on that in the bachelor uh, degree itself professor wani is there uh, he is uh, teaching the tribology uh, of uh, mechanical systems and maintenance of mechanical systems we have courses on that in bachelor program we have professor adnan who is teaching the the he transfer is well trained from iit kanpur in convection research we have professor babar from iic bangalore who is well trained there in solid mechanics smart smart materials uh, and we have a bus uh, our uh, curriculum is very powerful and it definitely builds uh, the capability of our uh, professionals as mechanical engineers they are well versed with the engineering knowledge and profession of thermodynamics heat transfer structures uh, ic engine background structure mechanics uh, and other fields production and industrial engineering we have professor sat sat uh, then we have in production some faculties so so far as uh, the job uh, achievement is concerned <clears throat> as you know if we are the best we are going to be taken like hot cakes if we are mediocre then obviously we must have less, less expectations and if we are more down then uh, we cannot expect uh, dreams uh, you know cannot have only some uh, hypothetical dreams <coughs> our professionals have to work hard they have to show their excellence through their grades uh, and through their acquirement of knowledge tomorrow there is going to be gate exam <coughs> after the end of the degree Uh, there is going to be civil services exam there are going to be so many exams uh, tofel gre some people like to go abroad for further studies they want to continue studies they want to com compete in companies everywhere uh, there is expected <laughs> that the mechanical engineering is a capable professional if he is not capable uh, so obviously Uh, it is not uh, you know it is not the department uh, which will be defective it is uh, his own self of course we are also responsible for providing the environment and the instruction to the professional will be training him will be providing the environment so fundamentally it is the professional who himself as i will give you one example Uh, when i was in hostel in my bachelor program i used to lock my door of the room from outside and enter from window and study continuously from 9 pm to 3 am during night 6 hour continuous run with my calculator pencil rubber and i would 
you know, go on just like it was an electronic printer and I will print the pages of problems, solving problems, solving problems. Obviously, I, uh, when I finished my, in 70% marks, I finished my degree and I joined immediately after that as a teaching assistant in the department. We were, we were only, I think, six or seven people who appeared in the interview and there were seven or eight vacancies. Before that, I had already in hand a junior engineer post of the field. So at a time in my profession, I have seen that two, two jobs I had at a time in hand. I have gone to Saudi Arabia, I have worked there. With the grace of God, I earned uh, crores of rupees. Uh, but uh, my fundamental, uh, you know, thing was that I would work hardest in the proper direction, not even donkeys are working hard. We should not work hard like donkeys. We should work in a proper manner in proper direction. Our goal and aim, mission, vision, everything has to be thoroughly understood and defined. If it is not understood and defined, then the whole work goes waste. We have to see what we are doing and where we are going. If all these things are borne in mind, then definitely we expect a successful mechanical engineering professional. So I only can pray uh, and uh, my hearty support is with you. I congratulate that you have qualified uh, the competitive examination. You have come through a very tough uh, competition and uh, you are uh, having in your mind to become mechanical engineering professionals. Our support in terms of academics, in terms of research, in terms of uh, laboratory practice, in terms of other professional skills, those we are going to provide you. Uh, our support is with you and your support with us will be that uh, you do the way we train you, we guide you. You follow the instructions properly and uh, you know one problem with these young guys is that they have lot many ideas, uh, you know, so many ideas in their mind, but senior people, they know with this idea he is going to land where. It is just like pilot sitting in the aircraft who is flying the plane. Passengers, passengers have lot many thoughts that how the plane should fly, but it is the pilot who is responsible and his uh, guidance is very important for the passengers. If passengers, uh, you know, take their own decisions and go ahead, definitely they are going to land in a crash. If they follow the guidance of their uh, instructors, and definitely they are going to land to the right place. Therefore, we should listen more than whatever ideas come to us that we put forth lesser than we listen. So we should have, uh, you know, a habit of listening and then analyzing what we are listening. Anyway, so again, we uh, congratulate you to the department and we hope that you are one of the successful professionals in life. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Sheikh Nareed Sir, Head Mechanical, for the inspiring and motivational speech. Thank you.
Now we have with us at metallurgical and material engineering, Dr. Keshwan Mehta, who apprises about the various facilities, faculty, and programs in the department. Please. Namaste to all of you. I am Yeshwan Mehta, Head Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. I will be briefing you about uh, the department and its facilities and the path which you should be following to make a good career in this field. Presentation. Okay, so this is your orientation program in the field of uh, metallurgical and materials engineering. Next, this is uh, you can see the departmental information on your screen. The department was established in 1963. Uh, there was a department of mining, and that department later was upgraded to metallurgical equipment. Later, the syllabus etc. were uh, changed and the department was again upgraded to metallurgical and material engineering a uh, few years back. We have a four year undergraduate academic program in which you have been enrolled and we also have a PhD program in which about 15 research scholars are presently working. Uh, we have six permanent faculty members at present and the recruitment process is being conducted. We hope that a few more will join us uh, in, the, in the next year. Next slide, please. These are the, uh, this is the broad classification of courses. Um, when we say metallurgical and materials degree, and basically, we are having uh, these four broad areas. That is physical metallurgy, in which you study metallography, then heat treatment, then physical metallurgy, these kind of uh, subjects, phase transformations, etc., also come under this, this area. So, the second broad area is extractive metallurgy. Within extractive metallurgy, you will be studying the extraction of iron uh, and the extraction of non ferrous metals like aluminium, uranium, etc. And then also, uh, then also, you will be studying the principles of extraction in this. Uh, broad area. Then we have mechanical metallurgy within which you will be studying the basic principles of uh, testing and that is tensile testing, compression testing and then another part is you will be studying the mechanical working of materials from the metallurgical point of view. We will also have a certain part related to casting and foundry, etc. Then, after the name was changed to metallurgical and materials engineering, a few courses related to material science were also added. So, now you have a certain part of the curriculum aimed at. Uh, aimed at uh, <coughs> making you familiar with ceramics, polymers, electronic materials, magnetic materials, dielectric materials, etc. 
and to improve your employability and employment potential, a few courses from the management department and a few courses related to computer programming have also are also being included as the syllabus is being revised uh, presently. And there are a few courses which have also which will also be included to improve your capability to sit in competitive examinations and uh, those courses are related to quantitative reasoning and identity reasoning etc. Again those courses will come under the humanities and social sciences departments. Next. Now these are the laboratory facilities. Uh, I will be uh, briefing you about the lab facilities, the important lab facilities, and you can also you know, make up your mind as to what you could do uh, even before you come to the final year and you do your projects. Because people who want to go for high studies in, say, USA or Europe, it is good for them to do uh, a short project in the third year. Uh, every year, some two or three people go to high, go for higher studies in uh, Europe, uh, specifically Eastern Europe, and uh, a few people also join the IITs for uh, higher studies in metallurgical engineering, the MTech to get. So this, uh, what you can see on the screen is atomic emission microscope, uh, <coughs> spectroscope. And this is used to ascertain the composition, the chemical composition of different materials like steels, mainly. So if you are doing some research work and you want to ascertain the, the composition of a material which you have developed, then this is a handy tool. We have steel casting for this, in which you can develop, for example, composites based on aluminum. So you can have metal matrix composites, you can develop it, and you can either develop precipitates in situ or you can add them. Uh, which is known as ex situ basically. So those composites then you can uh, characterize. So basically your main job is structure property correlation. So what is the structure and what is the property which you are able to uh, develop by preparing that structure. So what alloy you are trying to make, like if you add chromium to steel, to iron, then what kind of uh, changes in the property will occur if you add nickel, what will happen? So, uh, you, know, you have to be very versed with the kind of changes which will occur in pure metal when you add different alloys, alloying elements to it, then you can advise the design engineers as to what material should be used where and what material will be able to uh, give good service as a part in the whole design. Another uh, facility which you can see here, a furnace which is used for oxidation studies. Suppose you are using some metal in a high temperature atmosphere, then how will it behave? So, in, in that atmosphere, you basically study it by exposing it to high temperature and then trying, uh, and trying to understand what are the effects of high temperature on the material. So, this is uh, used, uh, this study is useful for understanding high temperature you know, 
applications. And again, you have high temperature muscle furnace which goes up to 1400 degrees centigrade. You can do ceramic sintering in this furnace, and uh, that will help you to gain better understanding into the uh, behavior of ceramic materials. Next, please. Here you can see a cryo valve. Uh, at the back, you can see a cylinder which is used to store liquid nitrogen and the blue uh, cable like tubing which you can see basically allows the material to freeze or rather it, it is uh, the temperature of the material inside this volume is lowered and since it is lowered it becomes brittle and then uh, the milling action is better. So you can generate nanostructured materials in this cryo volume. So anybody who is interested in doing some uh, experimentation on nanostructured materials, nano materials, then this is one good uh, lab facility which he or she should be thinking of. And then you have a hardness tester. Now in if you want to understand about the strength of the material, then this is an indicator. The hardness is the resistance to penetration. So this is a good indicator regarding the strength or wear behavior of the material. Next please. Here the first uh, photograph is of microstructure image analyzing system. This is used uh, in physical metallurgy and heat treatment laboratory practicals. And in order to understand the microstructure and then for correlating it with the property, you use this micros optical microscope and you study the microstructure by using this system. The analysis system is a software which will tell you regarding the porosity <coughs> material or the graphite flakes in cast iron or nodularity in cast iron. So those things you are able to study by this image analysis system. On the right side you can see a biologic uh, potential stat. Biologic is the company which supplies this potential stat. You can see the potential stat, the computer which records the data and the flat cell. We have a flat cell because we generally study aqueous corrosion with sheet kind of materials. So in using this uh, machine you are able to study the electrochemical corrosion of various materials in sheet form. Next please. These are um, some three related um, facilities. You have a spin cutter, you coat material and then that coating with the characteristics of the coating is studied and there are related related to this there are some other machines like this uh, centrifuge machine and then uh, ultrasonic sun plater etc which are also there in the lab next please now regarding placements this is the uh, this is uh, a part of the record of last year's placement which is which has been uh, published by the training and placement department students uh, basically go in diverse directions some go for high studies some go for uh, jobs in the code area some go for competitive examinations like banking and other um, uh, 
government examinations. Some go for higher studies in foreign countries. There are a few who have started their own businesses. And that is about all regarding our placements. The basic idea is that in four years you should develop your personality in all directions, make good use of the time here, and uh, come out in flying colors. Yes, please. So, thank you very much for your patient hearing. Thank you, Dr. Mehta, for overview of the department. Well, there is uh, one important announcement that the timetable will be available on website by Saturday and your class will be starting from Monday onwards. One important thing is that you will check the contact numbers, email ID of the concerned teachers from the timetable. This is for the first time we are mentioning the contact numbers of concerned teachers. So students can directly contact the teachers and make the groups and accordingly take the classes. From Monday onwards, we have the classes. Now we have with us Head Information Technology, Dr. Shabir Ahmed. He will advise us about the Department of Information Technology, about academic curriculum, and other facilities available. Thank you, Dr. Parvez. Uh, my name is Dr. Shabir. 
am head of department of information technology i am also the first faculty member in the department of information technology we started in 2007 i was appointed in 2008 as the first faculty member and we started with the uh, i will show the presentation of the few uh, minutes uh, but let me discuss that first we started with a batch of 40 this time we are having the batch strength of 90 so we are improving as one of the uh, newest departments uh, in nit chennai and i am happy to say that almost all the students from the very beginning 2008 and the batch was passed out in 2012 till now all the students get an opportunity for the campus selection here in the campus of nit city and many more uh, students who uh, want to pursue the higher studies they have bring laurels to the institute uh, pursuing their studies within india and abroad as well i will start with my presentation mr umar please so i welcome the class of 2020 so where we stand as i said that started in 2007 now the department of information technology in 2020 if i include um, all the uh, this number of students and it comes about to be 475 plus 183 so this is the alumnus we are having started with the 2007 and now no we are offer it based research programs as well in addition to the btech and what is our future program in the upcoming years we plan to offer two years post graduate and tech in information technology so establishing in 2007 with a batch of 40 expanding in 2009 then in 2018 we are having the 70 students by strength and the present status in the 2020 we are having 90 strength the vision of the vision and mission to obtain global recognition in information technology education and research by producing creators of the innovative technology mission to provide state of the art research facilities to generate knowledge and develop technologies in the thrust areas of information technology to participate in the design and development process in the research and development establishing and in industry to collaborate with the world class organizations to strengthen industry academia relationship for mutual benefit to develop it professionals with high moral and ethical values now before we start the, the next slide i want to share with you some of the success stories of my students those students who started here in nit sirnagar not only from the branch of information technology but from the branch of um, chemical engineering metallurgical engineering mechanical engineering who later on instead of becoming the uh, uh, this uh, experts in their field they have chosen the information technology and information in information technology they are this time pursuing the research and many of the students who have got their admissions in germany in france in usa 
uh, they are in contact with me and especially uh, two of them i know uh, daily they are uh, updating me about the latest research and the research is on the data sciences and in the uh, field of ai yes the next slide now if we see um, the curricula from the first semester second semester third semester we are involved from very from the very beginning that means from the first semester in the first semester the department of information technology will teach you the programming skills in the second semester also to some students we are uh, in the first uh, semester as well as in the second semester we are giving you the programming skills that means we involve with all the students within from the very uh, beginning from the inception and those students now who are with us in the department of information technology so we after that programming we also teach the basics like the elementary data style uh, data structures web programming discrete maths signal and systems software engineering operating system database management systems as is in case of the other uh, nits and iits and in the third year design and analysis of algorithm microprocessors computer organization and architecture theory of computation data communication computer networks artificial intelligence computer graphics big data object oriented program now if we see in this third year only we have included the upcoming or the what the industry needs and i remember that one of our uh, board of studies members who is from the ibm uh, he uh, he told me that you introduce the big data why you are waiting and we have introduced this big data course four years back five years back in our courses and we are teaching this course and students are doing research in the big data as well as we are having this time two of the research scholars who are pursuing the uh, their research in the big data the fourth year wireless and mobile communication information security image processing cloud computing and machine learning and if you see the industry demand that we need to know much more about the uh, machine learning ai and we are introducing the new and new courses which is demanded by the industry after getting the feedback from our alumni and after getting the feedback from the industry as well we have introduced those courses which are we are not able to introduce in the um, in these four years uh, course so any student can pursue those elective uh, uh, subjects and then uh, he or she can pursue the same as uh, the research field or in the industry as the some of them have the passion for that also and some of the uh, students who are from the other branches as well they are coming to us in the department of information technology and having the expertise in this the my faculty they want that they should pursue their projects in the information technology and that is a hybrid sort of a thing we are having the collaboration with the other uh, organizations as well as in the other departments within and outside the financial network the on campus placement record over the years you can see that this batch 2014 uh, percentage 74 15 62 73 and now if you see the why the there is not not written 100% the reason is that most of the students who wants to pursue the at a higher studies the uh, rest of the percentage they uh, don't want to join the industry they want to pursue the research and they are doing that research and somehow completed the phd some are uh, now uh, pursuing their phd that's why the percentage is they are 74 or 62 otherwise the companies are willing to take my uh, this uh, my students uh, for the 100% 150% some are getting two or some are getting three chances after uh, following the rules within the admission method and if you see the recruiting companies uh, it is starting from recent info game cap jimmy v pro e game uh, uh ibm lnt polaris samsung <coughs> infosys and all the companies which we you can name any company or uh, you can uh, in the information technology 
and they have been or they are willing to take our students. That speaks about the quality of the NHL. These are some of the organizations and the startups joined by our alumni. You can see it there. So these are nowadays. And the latest addition to that is the World Health Organization. One of my students have recently, during the COVID time only, and they recruited my students for the analysis purposes of the COVID-19. And in the research and development, we are having the broad research areas, artificial intelligence, machine learning, architecture and embedded systems, computer networks, data analytics, distribution systems and parallel programming, uh, graphics region, internet of things, wireless sensor networks, etc. Institute joined by our alumni for higher education, Texas, IIM, then IIT, IIT Delhi, uh, the University of North Carolina, IIM uh, Amritsar, and many more to name. Now, before completing my this uh, introduction, introduction to the uh, department and uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, little bit about the NIT segmented. My request to all the students in general, as you have worked hard to get a seat in NIT segmented, keep that enthusiasm with you and you should continue that spark and now bring a lot of this to the NIT segmented and especially to the Department of Information Technology, those students who get a seat in the Department of Information Technology. You selected an IT segmented and in an IT segmented you selected IT department. It's my responsibility, it is my responsibility of my faculty. I assure you that for any sort of cadre, for any sort of uh, uh, theory, for any sort of uh, so education, research, industry oriented, you want to talk to me, I'm always available to you. My faculty is always available to you. Our leadership is good enough so that we can bring the lot of this to the NIT segmented. Thank you very much. May God bless you all. Thank you, Dr. Shibir Sahib, for giving the overview of the department. Even the department is in the infancy stage, but uh, it has proved that they have wonderful placement report. Thank you, Shibir Sahib. Thank you. Time for the lunch. We will meet post session lunch around 2.30. We have only two talks left. Till then, goodbye.